Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to create virtual machines for VMware in Ansible. So firstly, I have a repository uh, that you can see in the description below um, with all of the code that you'll be uh, needing today. So as you read through this, uh, by the time you read this, the readme may have been updated with uh, other operating systems, but for now um, I've got which packages you'll need working for uh, Red Hat or CentOS 7. I will add Ubuntu um, version 8 of Red Hat um, and others. Um, you know, if people want to let me know of, of you know other operating systems that they're having trouble with, uh, obviously I can do a video on that as well. So um, things to note really uh, is you need Apple. Uh, well, you don't need Apple, but I'm using Ansible from the Apple repository just for ease really. Um, but you need to get Ansible from somewhere, whether that's directly from them or um, straight from the Apple repository, you can do that. Um, and then you need two packages. Uh, in uh, Red Hat 7, you need the Python 2 requests package uh, because Ansible is making HTTP calls um, to vSphere um, and this uh, this PYVM OMI um, package as well um, which is a library um, that has been written that uh, is used in the Ansible uh, module uh, VMware guest to, to talk to vSphere um, so you need those packages uh, you need to create a secrets file um, with your username and password for vSphere in now obviously you you would want to vault the, the secret file, which is why I split my secrets into its own file. In this example, I'm not going to vault it. I'll do another video on Ansible vaults. Um, but for now, I will just plain text the username and password um, into its own file. So first things first, let's clone this repository. So in here we will see we've got the variables, we've got the playbook, um, and we don't have a secrets file. So let's go ahead and create a secrets.yaml file. So in this file you need a username and a password. Now your username will be your vSphere username. And then your password will be whatever your password is. Now I'm going to off screen update this password file to the correct password. Uh, let me just check if that is done. Yes, so that secrets file now has the correct username and password for my vSphere setup. So now I'm going to talk through the variables. So uh, really the variables is where you're going to be updating really. Um, you may make a few small changes to the playbook. Um, but in the variables, uh, we've got the vCenter host name. Um, so this will be IP or uh, the fully qualified domain name of the vSphere server that you're connecting to. Um, the notes are going to be uh, any notes that you're going to be putting against the virtual machines that you're creating. The folder is the folder in vSphere that you're looking to place these virtual machines into, uh, which data store that you're going to be using, uh, the data center, um, in vSphere that you are deploying to. So some vSphere's, uh, you know, certainly in enhanced link mode and things like that, you're going to have multiple data centers in there. Uh, so you need to pick the right one. This is just a lab that we'll be using. Uh, I've only got one data center. Um, customization spec, um, I've left that in there as a placeholder of when I start looking at um, explaining how to do Windows deployments in uh, Ansible. The ESXi host name um, that you'll be connecting to. So you're either going to use an ESXi hostname or a cluster address. Again, as I said, I'm in a lab. I've only got one ESXi host uh, in this vSphere setup. So this is its IP address. If you wanted to use a cluster, you could do, um, and all you would need to do um, is change this to the, you could either just change this to the cluster address, um, and then we need to make a change in the playbook, or you could, you know, change the actual uh, variable name and go and update the playbook as well. And, and I'll show you that when we get there. Um, the state uh, we want our machines to be powered on. Um, we'll, I'll be demonstrating at the end of this uh, how to 
uh, update this to power off and just run the playbook again and it will shut all those virtual machines down for you. Um, and then this here uh, is a list of servers that we're going to be building. So it's the servers variable and then we've got different lines for the different servers. So this could be as long as you want. Um, this is a CentOS 8 server using a CentOS 8 template. So that this name here is the name that the, the uh, virtual machine is given when it's built. So I've got two here for this example. So in this playbook, um, now I have documented um, against all of the lines what they do. Um, so gather facts when we're not running through an inventory and gathering facts on servers. Uh, so set that to false and it'll, your playbook will run a little bit faster. Um, we've got two var files. Like I said, we've got the vars that we just went over uh, and the secrets file um, that I updated with the correct username and password for vSphere. Um, and then we've got two tasks. So the first task actually does the, the cloning of a virtual machine from a template and the second one just gives us an output. So I do need to update this and I will make sure that it's in the, the proper commit um, that we just actually want to see the entire output. Um, so in the tasks, uh, we have a local action uh, because we're running this locally. We're not running this in vSphere. Uh, sorry, not running this um, across m multiple machines. Um, we are running this locally on this server. So the, the Ansible module we're using is VMware Guest. It's got a host name, um, which is vSphere, uh, vCenter host name, which is if we look in our vars, there's vCenter host name, uh, username and password is grabbing from the secrets file. We do invalidate certs no. So if you've got a lab or you still use the um, self-signed certificates for vSphere, you're going to want to keep that to no. Um, and it will ignore all the security warnings uh, when trying to connect to vSphere. Uh, if you leave that out, um, you just want to make sure that your certificate is properly signed. Um, otherwise, that will that'll throw a warning and it won't work. Uh, folder, so which folder you, you want to put this virtual machine into. Again, folder there will be a folder vars here. Um, and then you'll notice some of these have got item dot, and I'll explain the item dot in a minute. So this is the, the ESXi hostname that I talked about earlier. If you change ESXi hostname here to cluster, and then go and update the value, all update. You could just update this value here with the cluster address, and then put in cluster here. Um, and then it will go and actually join the cluster, uh, go and connect to the cluster instead of to the direct to the server. And again, there's the data center that we talked about earlier, the state at which we want the machines to be in. Um, and I have set wait for IP address to be yes. Now, this is actually quite important, uh, quite an important note that if you have templates that don't have uh, VMI tools installed and working, uh, you do not want wait for IP address to be yes or it won't work. Um, what wait for IP address does is um, sits and waits for uh, uh, VMI tools to start and reports back the IP address to, to vSphere um, and then put, picks that up on the output. So um, make sure your VMI tools is working. If it isn't, just set that to no or remove the line um, and you know, it will just complete. Um, so you see I've got this with item server. So that's where this picks up here. So this with items of server um, is where this item dot template. So the with items allows you to use an item dot classification here. So with items is server. So if we go and look at our vars against server, we'll see we've got multiple lines. So we're doing a with item on multiple dot lines. And we've got here a name and a template for every single line. So if we go and look here, we have got with item server, so item.template and item.name. We've got item.name and item.template. So that's how it pulls those values out. If you wanted to add other things here and use them in the playbook, um, by all means you can do, but that's how that works. Um, we're gonna register the output to just underscore result. Um, and then we're gonna actually show that output on screen. So we'll be able to see all of the information that V3 has given back. Um, so, what we need to do first um, is go ahead and install Apple. Take this off screen. So there's Apple being installed, and then we need to install Ansible and the two Python modules that I explained earlier.
So here are those packages here that we need that we're getting installed. And once all of these are installed, we can go and run the playbook and um, it should just work. So we type Ansible hyphen playbook and then the playbook, which is just play. Uh, it's not because we actually need to go into the folder here. So Ansible playbook and then play.yaml. So we just run that. Um, it will take a few minutes um, to load. Uh, and then what we can see um, in vCenter um, is that that has actually started up. And we should be able to uh, see those machines that we've created. So we are expecting to see two servers, one called CentOS 8, one called CentOS 7, um, that have been cloned from a template. And there we have it, guys. So we have now CentOS 7 with VMware Tools, CentOS 8 with VMware Tools. If we have a look on here, uh, we will see that these servers have been built. Uh, you'll see this is OK and changed. Uh, this is only because I cancelled one to restart it because um, I wasn't seeing any output. Now, you can run this multiple times, and if you run it again, um, all it will do is you know confirm that everything is there. And you'll just see them both set to OK. And the one thing I've noticed um, on this video is that my, my message is just results. So let me go and see if I can do this live. So I can see the problem here is that I haven't actually done this. So usually on the output, and when you um, are running this, um, it should look a little bit different. Um, here we go. You can actually see the output um, of what's been going on here. IP address, here we go. And there it is. So the last thing I'd now like to show you is how to power these machines off. So in the VARS file, we're currently set to powered on. We just need to change that to powered off and rerun the playbook. That'll take a few minutes to go and you'll see they have a state of changed. And if we now have a look at the machines in vCenter, they are powered off. We can see in the tasks down here that they were powered off. Um, so that is how to build uh, vSphere servers. So feel free to uh, give me a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know if uh, you'd like to know anything more about this playbook uh, or if you're having any problems. And thank you very much.